Hello there, my name is Christopher Lovejoy. I'm a junior doctor currently doing a master's degree in machine learning in London. And today we're talking about whether AI could be used to automate the analysis of chest x-rays. Chest x-rays are the most commonly performed imaging procedure worldwide. In the UK alone, we perform 22 million chest x-rays, which is a mad number, and it accounts for 40% of diagnostic imaging worldwide. So what does that mean? That means a lot of images to review and a lot of work for radiologists. And unfortunately, it also means that a lot of hospitals have backlogs of chest x-rays waiting to be reviewed. But AI may play a role in helping us to cope with this demand. And there's a number of different ways in which AI could help us in these areas. AI could help us to prioritize scans for being viewed by a radiologist. AI could also screen for potentially missed diseases. It could also provide tools that help us to analyze chest x-rays more easily. Now there has been some discussion about whether AI could fully automate the analysis of chest x-rays and there have been some prominent researchers suggesting that this may be the case but I don't believe it will be and I'll explain later on in this video why I think so. I'm not going to talk in this video about how AI actually performs this analysis but I've made another video where I discuss it and I'll leave a link in the description below. So the first use is to prioritize scans for review. As I said, we perform a huge number of chest x-rays and therefore there's a big backlog of x-rays to be reviewed. But at the moment, it's difficult for the radiologist to know which scans are more urgent and which ones can be left for a few more days. But recently, a research group based in London and Warwick developed an AI to prioritize which scans should be reviewed by radiologists. And they found this algorithm, if used in real life, would lead to a reduction of the time taken to review a critical scan from 11 days down to around three days. A critical finding being some sort of disease that we would need to act on. And there are now multiple hospitals in the UK trialing the use of AI algorithms to prioritize their scans for radiologist review. The second potential use of AI would be to screen for missed pathologies. So the AI algorithm could run over any scan that the radiologist decides is normal, see if it picks up any abnormality, which actually the radiologist might have missed. Obviously being human, radiologists will occasionally make errors, and this could just be useful in helping to reduce the number of those errors. Now this could also be quite useful in training new radiologists, because what these algorithms can do is if they detect a pathology, they can also suggest the area where that pathology is, and that could be used by a radiologist who's learning how to interpret scans because if they were to miss a pathology, the algorithm could point where it might be and encourage them to take another look. The third use is in tools that can support the analysis of chest x-rays. There are some things on chest x-ray which are hard to objectively report. For example, haziness on a chest x-ray, which we call consolidation, could be very consolidated or it could be a little bit consolidated. And radiologists have terms that they can use to describe this, but there's going to be a bit of subjective variation between these. What AI may enable is an automated objective measurement of things such as consolidation. So for example, a radiologist could use a consolidation detection tool and highlight the area where he sees the consolidation and it would then give him back a objective measurement of that consolidation. This could also be used for measuring other signs that we see on a chest x-ray. Now I'm going to explain that while I think AI can be very, very useful in the analysis of chest x-rays, I don't think it's going to enable us to fully automate it, at least not for the foreseeable future. The Stanford study that I mentioned earlier showed a reasonable accuracy at detecting 14 different pathologies. However, there are many pathologies not included on that list. Just as some examples, it wouldn't detect coarctation of the aorta, fractures of the ribs, osteomyelitis, air under the diaphragm, or pneumoperitoneum. Probably wouldn't know what to say if someone actually didn't have a heart. And the point I'm trying to make is that for an AI to be able to recognize a particular pathology, it has to have seen lots and lots of examples of that before and those examples need to have been labeled as that particular disease yet the number of diseases that might potentially be picked up by chest x-rays is very 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 large and with humans we have the flexibility to be able to see something that's very uncommon and know how to interpret it but for an AI if it's never seen that before it's not going to understand what it means therefore if we wanted to move towards making an AI algorithm that can fully automate chest x-rays we would need to have a massive data set of x-rays with every possible pathology that could be feasibly seen on a chest x-ray with labeled examples and multiple examples of each different type and we would have to feed those all into an algorithm that would be trained simultaneously which would need a very very highly powered computer and would take quite a bit of time so definitely with the studies that have been done so far and the sort of data sets that we have fully automating the analysis of chest x-rays is not likely for the foreseeable future of course, that doesn't mean that things won't change somewhere down the line, but maybe in 10 or 20 years time, things will look a bit different. But in my opinion, claims that AI might be replacing radiologists in the near future in the analysis of chest x-rays are a little bit premature. 
Now, one caveat is in the developing world, because actually in areas where there simply aren't enough radiologists, analysis using an AI might be better than no analysis at all. So much of what I've discussed, I believe broadly does apply to other disease types and other imaging types, but there are certain nuances between them. If you'd like me to make videos about specific ones in the future, feel free to leave a comment in the description below. And likewise, if there's anything you think I've missed out or anything else you'd like to add, feel free to leave a comment and I'll read all of them. Now, everything that I've said in this video is based on the research that I've done and the discussions I've had with other people working in this area, but I'm not actively conducting research in this area at the moment, and therefore I wouldn't consider myself to be an expert. If there is anybody doing research in this area who happens to watch this video, I'd love to hear from you. Feel free to reach out to hello at chrislovejoy.me or leave a comment below. And that's the end of the video. I hope that was interesting and useful. Please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.